Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. With us now is former Deputy Assistant to the President and former Deputy National Security Advisor to President George W. Bush, Elliot Abrams, now a Senior Fellow for Middle Eastern Studies at the Council on Foreign Relations. He joins us now on the phone from Washington. And Elliot, it's good to have you with us. Thank you. Good to be back. Well, the National Security Agency's phone records and data gathering program revealed recently by NSA contractor Edward Snowden has survived a legislative challenge in the House. What's your reaction to this? I'm glad it has. I really side with those who think that uh, the invasion of privacy here is minimal because they're not listening to the content of the calls. They're just seeing the numbers. And I think we need it if we want to avoid another 9-11 type tragedy. Mm -hmm. Now, critics say the government's gone way too far in the name of security. Representative Jim Sensenbrenner, who wrote the Patriot Act, says that the Obama administration is abusing the Patriot Act and that Americans have to rein in such abuses. Do you disagree then with Representative Sensenbrenner? Yes, I do. Uh, look, we're all concerned about invasions of privacy. But again, I think the invasion here would be if some guy in a federal office were listening to your phone call. That is not happening. These are just computers that gather in the numbers and try to see relationships among the numbers. So I don't think uh, people should be so worried about this. And I think we have real good testimony from former uh, counterterrorism officials that this helps keep us safe. President Obama was very critical of former President Bush's policies on terrorism, but some say that his record in fighting terrorism reflects the same approach that he campaigned against. For example, he's expanded the drone strikes programs as well as the phone records and data program. He's also been unable to close Gitmo. Can you compare and contrast these two presidents' terror policies? And is it accurate to say that there is a Bush-Obama continuum here? I think it is accurate to say there's a continuum because the threats did not change on Inauguration Day in 2009. Um, and I think what President Obama has found out is that a lot of the things he said during the campaign were just wrong. I mean, what he's finding out is that we need to do many of these things, take these actions. And indeed, uh, as you said, he has expanded the drone program and kept Guantanamo Bay open. Uh, so I think this is a continuum that shows that... Uh, you know, some things are above and beyond politics. Shifting to the Middle East now, President Obama on Wednesday suspended delivery of four fighter jets to Egypt. How do you view this move? I think it's the right thing to do. For one thing, our law says when there's a coup, when the military removes an elected president, we should suspend aid. Uh, and there was a coup. Uh, you know, the military in Egypt threw out a president. We may not have liked him. He may have been unpopular. It was still a coup, so I think we need to follow our law. And frankly, whatever the Egyptians need now, they need bread, they need oil, they need economic reform. They don't need more F-16s. I mean, so the sacrifice that's being made here by delaying for what may be a matter of months, the F-16s, shouldn't be such a big deal. Is Egypt on track for democracy? I think that's going to be very difficult, and I think it's going to take them a long time. They did just have a coup. It was a popular coup because the president who had been elected was uh, misbehaving, was, was not really governing in a democratic fashion. And I think now the question of how you reintegrate the Muslim Brotherhood, if you can reintegrate the Muslim Brotherhood into a new democratic system, boy, that's going to be very difficult. So this is, this is going to take a long time. Turning to Syria now, Army General Martin Dempsey says the Obama administration is deliberating whether to use military power in Syria, where a civil war there has killed almost 100,000 people. Do you think NATO should enforce a no-fly zone in Syria, much like it did in Libya? No, I'm not in favor of a no-fly zone. I think, you know, the, the amount of uh, people and planes and money that it takes and the risks that we would run are very great, and it doesn't do what you're trying to do. You're trying to stop these, this kind of terrorist activity by the Assad regime. But a lot of the damage is done by artillery, and they fire shells into neighborhoods and apartment houses and homes, and that wouldn't be touched at all by a no-fly zone. So I am not in, really in favor of a no-fly zone. Now, Secretary of State John Kerry is trying to get the Israelis and Palestinians back to the negotiating table. Given reports of a strained U.S.-Israel relationship, can Israel expect the Obama administration to be a fair middleman, if you will? And do you see Israel agreeing to pre-1967 borders? 
I think they've gone back to the table, the Israelis and the Palestinians, mostly uh, as a favor to Secretary Kerry and because they don't want to be blamed. I, I frankly think these talks will not go anywhere. Israel's not going to go back to those 67 lines. Um, the talks may start, uh, and I hope they don't break down quickly, but I don't really see the basis for getting to a peace agreement here. Uh, I don't know why Secretary Kerry is optimistic about this. Let's talk about Iran. Prime Minister Netanyahu has recently suggested that time is running out to stop Iran's nuclear ambitions. Do you foresee an Israeli military action in the near future? Well, I wouldn't say the near future, but uh, I do think the Israelis are determined to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Uh, we're going to have some negotiations, I guess, in August with this new Iranian president. Um, and I think the Israelis realize time is running out. So if the United States cannot prevent Iran from moving steadily forward toward a nuclear weapon, I think the Israelis will strike maybe, uh, with, I would say, within the next six or nine months. I don't think it's imminent. Last question for you, Elliot. Should Martin Dempsey be reconfirmed for a second term as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff? And should Samantha Power be confirmed as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations? Well, I think a Power should. I think that's an easy one in the sense that, you know, Barack Obama won the election. So in principle, he ought to get his own U.N. ambassador. And she is a person who's shown a great interest in um, human rights and democracy issues that the Obama administration generally has not been very interested in. So uh, I would say yes on that one. I'm really concerned about um, General Dempsey because I think the way he's handled Syria has been really unacceptable. He's done this parade of horribles that suggests we have no options. Everything we'll do and will get us into an Iraq-type war. Uh, will cost billions. There are, there's nothing we can do. Those are policy questions. And I think his the things he's been saying have really tied the president's hands and been meant to tie his hands. And I think that's inappropriate for the military. I think the policy should come from the civilians. All right. We'll leave it there. Elliot Abrams, thanks for joining us today. You're very welcome. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.